Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Tuesday the 17th of January and we're remembering Anthony of Egypt, Lesser Festival. If you are following in the book, uh, Common Worship Daily Prayer, you'll need to turn to the evening prayer during the 50 season section, which is after the two uh, prayers during the day, ordinary time and seasons. You'll find morning and evening prayer, ordinary time and seasons. We're in the season section, evening prayer, epiphany. Church of England's website, Remus Daily Prayer, also have uh, the words and one may download apps for Apple or Android devices if you prefer. You're welcome to join me in the building. I'd suggest you probably wait till it gets a bit warmer, but you may join by Zoom also. The codes are on the Blythe Valley Church's website and Facebook page. Live streaming on Facebook and recording the audio and we'll upload that presently onto my Dominic Doble YouTube channel. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You gave your Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit, you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvellous light, may our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The J.S.B. Monsort Hymn. O worship the Lord in beauty of holiness, bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. Low at his feet lay thy burden of carefulness, high on his heart he will bear it for thee. Comfort thy sorrows and answer thy prayerfulness, guiding thy steps as may best for thee be. Fear not to end his course in the slenderness of the poor wealth thou wouldst reckon as thine. Truth in its beauty and love in its tenderness, these are the offerings to lay on his shrine. These though we bring them in trembling and fearfulness, he will accept for the name that is dear. Mornings of joy give or evenings of tearfulness, trust for our trembling and hope for our fear. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of a lowliness, kneel and adore him. The Lord is his name. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is number 89, the first 37 verses, quite enough probably. Psalm 89, verses 1 to 37, you'll find the psalm at the back of the book, if that's where you're following, or by scrolling on. We'll open and close with the refrain. I'll read it all, you're welcome to read it all, listen to it all, or read the even numbered verses as we make our way through. We say the glory be after verse 37 before returning to the refrain and pause to read the prayer that follows to use it as we see fit. Psalm 89, 1 to 37. Truly the Lord is our shield. My song shall be always of the loving kindness of the Lord. With my mouth will I proclaim your faithfulness throughout all generations. I will declare that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness as firm as the heavens. For you said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. Your seed will I establish forever and build up your throne for all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who among the clouds can be compared to the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the host of heaven? A God feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible above all those round about him, who is like you, Lord God of hosts? Mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. You rule the raging of the sea. You still its waves when they arise. You crushed Rahab with a deadly wound and scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Yours are the heavens 
the earth also is yours. You established the world and all that fills it. You created the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon will rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before your face. Happy are the people who know the shout of triumph. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all the day long, and are exalted in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and in your favour you lift up our heads. Truly the Lord is our shield, the Holy One of Israel is our King. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set a youth above the mighty, I have raised a young man over the people. I have found David my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand shall hold him fast, and my arm shall strengthen him. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked person afflict him. I will strike down his foes before his face, and beat down those that hate him. My truth also and my steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name shall his head be exalted. I will set his dominion upon the sea, and his right hand upon the rivers. He shall call to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him my firstborn, the most high above the kings of the earth. The love I have pledged to him will I keep for ever, and my covenant will stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure for ever, and his throne as the days of heaven. But if his children forsake my law, and cease to walk in my judgments, if they break my statutes, and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their offences with a rod, and their sin with scourges. But I will not take from him my steadfast love, nor suffer my truth to fail. My covenant will I not break nor alter what has gone out of my lips. Once for all have I sworn by my holiness that I will not prove false to David. His seed shall endure for ever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast for ever as the moon, the enduring witness in the heavens. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Truly the Lord is our shield. Scrolling past our first reading to the canticle and song of praise, turning back in the book to evening prayer during Epiphany season. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. <coughs> you are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. A reading from the life of Antony by Athanasius of Alexandria from Kindle Edition of Celebrating the Saints. Antony was Egyptian by race. His parents were well-born and prosperous, and since they were Christians, he also was reared in Christian manner. Following their death, he was left alone with one younger sister. He was about 18 or even 20 years old, and he was responsible both for home and his sister. Six months had not passed since the death of his parents when, going to the Lord's house as usual and gathering his thoughts, he considered while he walked how the apostles, forsaking everything, followed their saviour, and how in the Acts of the Apostles some sold what they possessed and took the proceeds and placed them at the feet of the Apostles for distribution among those in need, and what great hope is stored up for such people in heaven. He went into the church pondering these things, and just then it happened that the Gospel was being read, and he heard the Lord saying to the rich young man, If you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. It was as if by God's design he held the saints in his recollection, and as if the passage were read on his account. Immediately Antony went out from the Lord's house and gave to the townspeople the possessions he had from his forebears, three hundred very beautiful aurorae of land, so that they would not disturb him or his sister in the least, and selling all the rest that was portable, when he had collected sufficient money he donated it to the poor, keeping back a few things for his sister. But when entering the Lord's house once more he heard in the gospel the Lord saying, Do not be anxious about tomorrow, he could not remain any longer, but going out he gave those remaining possessions also to the needy. 
placing his sister in charge of respected and trusted virgins and giving her over to the convent for rearing, he devoted himself from then on to the discipline rather than to the household, giving heed to himself and patiently training himself. There were not yet many monasteries in Egypt, and no monk knew at all the great desert, but each of those wishing to give attention to his life disciplined himself in isolation, not far from his own village. At first Antony also began by remaining in places proximate to his village, and going forth from there, if he heard of some zealous person anywhere, he searched him out like the wise bee. He worked with his hands, having heard that he who is idle let him not eat. He spent what he made partly on bread and partly on those in need. He prayed constantly, since he learned also that it was necessary to pray unceasingly in private, for he paid such close attention to what was read that nothing from Scripture did he fail to take in. Rather, he grasped everything, and in him the memory took the place of books. Living his life in this way, Antony was loved by all. People used to call him God's loved, and some hailed him as son, and others as brother. So to our first Bible reading, other than the psalm. Genesis 7 from 11. If you are following the Bible off the shelf, a book, you, you will find that there are, um, at the very beginning, you'll find the book of Genesis opening the law section of the Hebrew Scriptures. We're looking for the large number seven within that book. That's the chapter number. And then the small numbers of the text, verses 11 onwards. Genesis chapter 7 from 11. You'll find it also by scrolling back a little if you are following electronically from the canticle we read a moment ago. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth for forty days and forty nights. On the very same day Noah with his sons Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark. Then every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued for forty days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. The waters swelled so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters swelled above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep, and all flesh died that moved on earth. Birds, domestic animals, wild animals, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all the human beings. Everything on dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground. Human beings and animals and creeping things and birds of the air, they were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those were with him in the ark. And the water swelled on the earth for 150 days. So it's set out very clearly here in the Hebrew version of the Gilgamesh epic that all land-dwelling animals and birds alongside Noah and his family were on the ark. And uh, once they were safely gathered in, God shuts the door. It's God's salvation, it's God's decision who is and who isn't within the um, receptacle, the ark. We've got the ark of the Lord and we've got the Noah's ark. These are sort of containers, whether it was a boat, whether it was a ship. On the one hand, the other was um, a gold um, covered chest but it was a container and uh, so there's this ancient story there's a Babylonian there's a Gilgamesh epic of floods and this is the Hebrew sort of uh, what's the word annexing of it turning it into a story of God being cross with everybody keeping a remnant killing everything else and then allowing these floods 15 cubits deep, covering all the mountains, and everything dies. All humans, everything that lives on land with breath, including winged animals, I guess, because they couldn't find food. And we're told that uh, the rains fell for 40 days, and uh, sorry, the flood continued for 40 days, waters increased. The waters swelled on the earth for 150 days, presumably after that, 40 and so effectively that's, I guess, enough time for 
anything that could have survived, perhaps as they understood it, to have died, whether that's a figure from the epic or whether it's a figure that's been added here. But throughout um, Hebrew history and into our own day, however much we do or don't believe or understand, this is an act of God that has annihilated a vast expression of life. Just as uh, the dinosaurs died, was it an asteroid, was it a flood? You know, from time to time there are these big catastrophes, layers and layers of mud with layers and layers of different animals in them. There are floods, whether it's universal, whether it's local. In those days, the known world could have been covered with water. It was obviously in, in the psyche of those ancient peoples. And uh, Hebrews and Christians recognise water washes, it destroys, it cleanses. For the church, this is a picture of the water of baptism from our old life, getting rid of all that God doesn't agree with being protected by God, coming through to all that is new. That door is made of wood. The cross is of wood. It contains, it keeps out those who believe. It's the security for those that don't. It's excluding. Many layers of meaning can be attributed to this passage, whether we are taking it literally or metaphorically. So we move on to Matthew 24 from 15 to 28. Matthew opens the second covenant, if you're following the Bible, Flick through from Genesis to about two thirds of the way through, and then you come across the Greek scriptures opening with Matthew, Gospel of Matthew. We're looking for chapter 24, large number at the head of the paragraph. Again, 24, small numbers in the text. The verse is 15, this time to 28. Matthew 24 from 15. So when you see the desolating sacrilege standing in the holy place, as was spoken by the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. Someone on the housetop must not go down to take what is in the house. Someone in the field must not turn back to get a coat. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days. Pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath, for at that time there will be great suffering, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no one would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. And if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce great signs and omens, to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Take note, I have told you beforehand, so if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it, for as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man, wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. So, just as we read about that flood, God's judgment on all land-dwelling living things, we now hear of uh, another great event. There isn't much in the way of uh, explanation as to what it is, but whatever it is, is clearly sufficiently terrifying that uh, the writer here reckons that uh, we should hope it doesn't happen in winter or on the Sabbath, which is when we wouldn't have food around. And people mustn't go back into the house, it's a bit like a, a fire drill, or an actual fire, I guess. You know, raise the alarm, get out, stay out, get us out, whatever it is the fire service uh, instruct us to do. The desolating sacrilege is basically the um, Roman um, standards, the Roman gods that are put into the temple to demonstrate the supremacy of uh, Rome and its power. So when that happens, just before the temple, I guess, is thrown down, uh, this is the overthrow of God's people. It's uh, raising to the ground. Because under um, the peace of Rome, up until that point, the Jews were allowed to live openly, sensibly, honestly, living after their own place um, with the puppet rulers of the Jews set up um, under the Roman rule. But then the persecution increased and uh, Jerusalem was... I don't know, it was quite sacked, but... Um, their way of life was no longer deemed to be compatible with Rome. And so the temple was, first of all, um, desolated, was not the right word, mocked, ridiculed by having the Roman gods put in it and then raised to the ground. But we are told when these things happen, don't just assume God is coming back uh, or has come back. There will be false prophets leading even the uh, pious and determined and well-informed um, astray. When... God does this work, it will be evident, we are told. And an extraordinary line, 
Just as lightning comes from east and flashes the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Whenever the corpse is there, the vultures will gather. So the Son of Man is supposed to be bringing life, we thought. But just as some of the prophets tell us, actually, the day of judgment is going to be a difficult one and not a positive one. God arrives and the vultures gather. So uh, let us pray that we will be found, as it were, on the right side of history, on the right side of that door on the ark when judgment comes. And uh, those that have caused us problems and uh, those who have oppressed and persecuted peoples of the world, those who have been rich and got richer, making the poor poorer, those who have been warlike in their intent, those who have destroyed the environment, those that have uh, broken society through their selfishness, through their ignorance, they're the ones, arguably, who will uh, face their maker with fear and trembling. To the responsory, then back in evening prayer during Epiphany season. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. God's salvation has been openly shown to all people. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. The Song of Mary. The uh, opening refrain is uh, possibly from the uh, common of religious, you can join in at my soul proclaims if you wish, if you're following in the book. But you may like to pause and look up under today's date, 17th of January, uh, under Anthony, where you need to go to find the. Um, I think it's Anthony, just double checking. Yeah, um, you might want to look up 17th Anthony and find the direction to the refrain with which we will open and close the Song of Mary. You have left all things and followed me, you will be rewarded a hundred times over and gain eternal life. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have left all things and followed me. You will be rewarded a hundred times over, and gain eternal life. Father, Son, Spirit, one in three, three in one, at the end of this day we come to you and we look back at those moments where we've been alive, where we've known your presence, where we've felt fulfilled, satisfied, and we thank you for them. We might have uh, been creative, we might have rested, we might have had people being kind to us, or others recognise our kindness to them. We might have uh, made progress in jobs at home or at work, and we thank you for all those experiences that have increased how we are, who we are, and our sense of well-being, belonging, worth. We also recognise, however, that the day might have been one that has brought us down, might have tested, we might have felt distant from you. People might have been unkind to us, our voices might have whispered in our ears. We may have been unkind to others, in error, in haste. We may have lost friends, lost money, lost relationship, lost hope, lost faith. And so if that is us, we come to you, or on behalf of them, to pray for your healing, your restoration, your provision and protection. From Release International, the military requisition to church in Mobyi, Shan State, for use as a kitchen, then planted landmines around it before they left. Pray for church members. One said the church's desecration felt like destroying our hearts. From Christian Aid. There has been a cholera outbreak in Syria, we read, on the 17th of January. Pray for a scale up or an increase, I think is what they mean, in support for northwest Syria, where this outbreak occurred. The Joint Public Issues team has a prayer for Ukraine, part of which reads, God of all, with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine, in a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force in that nation and wherever it takes place for the oppression of any peoples. From the Suffolk Diocese,
prayer diary, pray for Mark and his people of St. Edmund Way Benefice. We pray for any permission to officiate House for Duty, clergy, any readers, any elders, pray to you for their church wards of treasurers and secretaries. in that place and we pray for increased support and encouragement from uh, the communities in which those buildings are placed that they may continue to be used for worship but also for other community events that there might be a life beyond the church for those church buildings we pray for chaplains the police force we pray that there will be an encouragement that they will be able to um, find the words and the time that they need to provide the support for the police and we pray for chaplains amongst other Uniformed Emergency Services. And we pray for Andrea, who is Hospital Administrator in Kagera at Dallas, working hard to raise funds to equip specialist doctors with new equipment. Pray that they are successful in that bid. And we pray for the people and businesses associated with Halesworth Town, Halesworth Road, Walpole Road, Bramfield Road, London Road, Wissett Road, Norwich Road, Key Street and Halton Road. Nations, but all of those are named after the villages that those roads lead out to, and they, cut, they represent areas of this town. I'm not reading out all the street names as I do for the villages, as that would take some while. We pray for the people who live in those addresses, where things are going well. May they be blessed and a blessing to those around them. Where things are not going well, may they um, have the, the help and assistance they need from neighbours, from other organisations and agencies. We pray for people running businesses to in from those addresses <clears throat> may they continue to thrive and prosper and so make their contribution to the local economy and we pray for david sally peter liz peter maggie eileen Ginny, ron and jean linda valerie melissa daniel emily sam joan pedro becky helen catherine oliver Gemma, and others we may know for whom life at the moment is a challenge we pray that uh, you will hear their prayer they will know your presence we ask that you will act in sovereign grace and that your rescue will be part of their story that they may share that will bring others perhaps to a recognition and realisation of your reality and uh, move people to engage with your covenant and respond in love. We thank you too for all that's good in the lives of Len and John. Dolly, Joan. Sheila, Marlene, Peter, Jen, Alan, David, John, and all others who've recently died with a special blessing for John and his family as he was laid to rest today. Remember those who died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, and accident, those that have taken their own lives. We pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, all who've served you here. And with Anthony, all whose years mine falls at this time. Whilst that uh, giving up everything and uh, living isolated alone in the desert isn't necessarily everybody's cup of tea, we thank you for the effect nevertheless that had on many who journeyed to him for guidance and counsel. May he pray for us that we may, for ourselves, make the right decisions about our prioritisation and our reaction, our response to you, that uh, your mission and ministry may be fulfilled in our day. We ask according to your promises to humanity, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And we pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances that uh, we will recognise your presence with us and as we do we will hear your inspired words spoken through your incarnate mouth by your, the breath of your spirit and that we will thereby, thereby therein um, find the um, chaos of our emotions stilled and find ourselves transported in your presence to your safe haven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Tahan Rama Shantiri Kashibani Arhalim. Nikomas Mohokashatari Patiash Mahara Mokola Hanira. Ya from us Mohoroko Shantira Bes near Amahabakoli Hadi Amesfere. Nikomanyo Sarak has an Asharlas and Dira Krasaglish, Lassi Urukosham Yak. Niora Mirus Nati Peranas Mahasa Koshala Hadi Ishmaza. Ya from us Mohokashadira was Mahasa Mokoshahali Mishri Masma. Nimbromanibus <laughs> 
Tasna Alian Hamasa or her as he says, Dim as Manu, Hamra Mangulas or Nirkasa, I think that. The one shows some no local miras, and yet she see my old Lucius Alan as a color. Chapa, San Yelashna San Asakavada. Most gracious God, who called your servant Antony to sell all that he had and to serve you in the solitude of the desert. By his example, may we learn to deny ourselves and to love you before all things, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite those joining us on YouTube.